predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified.
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified.
Sound check. One, two, one, two. Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to do a very quick check. So, hello everybody, including everybody online. So, who was at the Christmas dinner yesterday? Put your hands up. Woo! Woo! That's quite a lot of y'all. So good, right? Yesterday was so good. A wonderful time of good music, good food, and also wonderful fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, I, it is my honour and my pleasure to invite our wonderful missionaries all the way from the Philippines. Please give it up for Coro Cantabile! Woo! But before we do that, as they make their way up to the stage, I'd like to turn your attention to the video. So let's watch it together. What is it like to be a part of Coro Cantabile? Coro Cantabile is an excellent Filipino choir that touches lives. They bring cheer to people through concerts and cantatas in different parts of the country. Through their music, they also bring a little bit of the Philippines to homesick kababayans in Europe, Asia, and Australia. Coro Cantabere also brings churches and people together through the annual Coro et al. festivals. Aside from these, Coro Cantabere aims to improve church choir music through the annual music camps or through workshops for churches. But wait, there's more! We are God's recipients of His unending grace and love, realizing that the overflow of His blessings must not only be kept and stored, but designed to be shared, so that Christ's love may be declared throughout the world. We will continue to share God's love among the nations and touch the lives of many people through our lives and our music. We will be sensitive to where the Lord is leading us, and what He wants us to do. We will gladly embrace new open doors and greater heights that will bring honor and glory to our God. We are Coro Cantabile, music missionaries for the Philippines and for the world. Continue to go and share the gospel. Support us and help us. Partner with us. Through music, you too are bringing people together.
Good morning. My name is Lawrence. I'm a mathematics uh, teacher and a pastor in Maranatha First Evangelical Christian Church. Good morning. My name is Lay Subido from Batasan Hills International Baptist Church. I'm a former hotelier and now I'm an entrepreneur and focusing on the ministry. I handled youth and the kids. Good morning. I'm Joshua and I'm from Barrio Brero Baptist Church. And currently, I'm a call center agent handling Facebook accounts. And uh, my minister, I'm a choir minister. Blessed morning, everyone. I'm Marinetta Alvarez, Mars for short. And I'm from Grace Fundamental Baptist Church. And I serve in um, the music ministry as well. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is JB. I came from Open Door Baptist Church, and I'm a call center agent, and I'm a part of a, our church music ministry. Hi, my name is Zaz from Capital City Alliance Church. I work in a bank and a praise and worship leader. Hello, good morning. Wow. Yeah, my name is Ronald. And I am an entrepreneur, and, a, and I, uh, I, I go to church at Good Samaritan United Methodist Church, and I am a choir member. Good morning. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. That's good morning in the Philippines. Yeah. So I am Divine Basilio, the wife of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> and I am from Maranatha First Evangelical Christian Church. I serve the Lord through the music ministry, and I, I am also a, a choir member and church keeper. This. Good morning, Church of Praise. I'm Lance, and I'm an architect and um, academician, and I serve the Lord at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Hi, good morning. My name is Kayla Benitez. I'm a full-time housewife, and I'm a minister from Moriah Bible Baptist Church in Gapan, Nueva Ecija. Hi, I'm David. I am a music minister at Moriah Bible Baptist Church, and also I'm a nurse by profession. Wow. Hello, I'm Sharon Abisamis. I am a music director in Maranatha First Evangelical Christian Church. I handle choirs uh, in the in churches and also in government agencies. Good morning, I'm Ivan. I own a cloud kitchen, and so I also cook. And I serve at St. Stephen's Parish Episcopalian Church. Good morning, I'm Danny. I serve the Lord in the music ministry and the multimedia ministry at Emmanuel Baptist Church. I work in an electric utility company in the Philippines. Good morning. My name is Hezekiah C. I, I, went to, I go to church at St. Stephen's Parish. I'm a full-time church worker there and serving in the choir. Good morning. I am Janine Hilario. I'm a Bible and music teacher, and I go to Benmar Baptist Church, and I'm also a church choir conductor. Good morning. I'm teacher Eunice from Capital City Baptist Church. Uh, also a music minister. Hello, good morning. I'm Toby Agonoy. I'm from Capital City Alliance Church. I serve in the music ministry and I am a carpenter. Good morning. I, my name is Praise. I am an architectural designer and I am a Southern Baptist. I handle the children. That's all. <laughs>
composed of singers and volunteers from different Christian churches in the Metro Manila. Our mission is to become, become the excellent Filipino choir that touches lives. God has given us opportunities to minister across the globe in Asia, Australia, United Arab Emirates, and Europe through evangelistic and cultural concerts such as this, trainings, and music workshops. These are all manifestation of God's calling and purpose for the group, that our borders and territories be enlarged for God's kingdom and His glory alone. This is our mission, and all we need is to trust and obey the Lord as He leads us. Service. 
Peace out. 
that's the secret to have uh, joy in our lives and to be happy in Jesus is only to trust and obey God. Whatever He is um, sending the, um, the message to us, so let us be sensitive to God's message and to our calling as uh, Christians. And um, on behalf of Koro Cantabile, um, we are truly thankful for your warm welcome and invitation to us. This is our first time in Johor Bahru, in this part of Malaysia, and we've been blessed um, since our coming last uh, Thursday and up to now. We'll be leaving soon. Um, some of us will be leaving tonight, going back to the Philippines, and um, some of us will be leaving tomorrow. And uh, before we leave Malaysia, we would want to bring the Christmas spirit here in our congregation. You'll be uh, hearing some Christmas songs, um, Carol of the Bells and Deck the Hall. And we hope to see you again next time when the Lord allows Pastor and all your leaders here. And we hope that we can partner with you in different ministries. And as we sing our last song, let us um, 
continue to tell the story of Jesus, the birth of Christ, not only here in JB, not only here in Malaysia, but to other parts of the world. It, in Matthew, it says that, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and I will be with you always. So let us tell the story of Jesus this Christmas season and in all seasons of our lives. I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and He showed me the way. Won't you go? Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is our Lord. Tell it, go, tell it. Go, he made me a watchman upon that city. I am the least of all. Oh, won't you go? Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is our Lord. Tell it, go, tell it. Go. Shepherds lay a watching their flock that starry night. An angel of the Lord came and shone a holy Morning, everyone. Morning. Now, let's say a big thank you to the Coral Cantabile team on such an angelic time of worship with just their voices. I don't think I can do that, man. So good. Thank you so much, guys. Good morning, everyone. So good to be seeing y'all twice this week. Wow. Tell the person next to you, I'm so glad you made it. Come, tell the person next to you. All right. We'd like to welcome those who are first time in our midst. If you are new, please wave so that our Ashes team can come and just give you a warm welcome. All right? Now the first one. Leong Chi Hong. Leong Chi Hong, welcome. Jini Yao. Jini Yao, welcome. Niall Delosa Macalinao. Hello, welcome. Hi, welcome. Jem Sobrano. Welcome. Cheng Meiling. Hello. And the last one, Oliver Revelino. Welcome. Where are you? <laughs> oh, oh, welcome. Alright, for those online, you can type I'm new in the comment section so that we can acknowledge you. Alright, now on to offering and online giving. 
members can give uh, give online either via do it now direct bank transfer or touch and go information will be on the screen please indicate the purpose of giving missions tithe or something else etc all may give to the church but there is no obligation giving is a way that we worship and to show gratitude for God's provision upon our lives are we ready all right let's pray thank you God dear Lord thank you for giving us this day we are grateful and look to you in everything we do and we say as we give a portion of what you've blessed us please take delight in it and use it for your glory O oh God Continue to provide whatever that we need, not just monetarily, but spiritually and emotionally. Grant our leaders the wisdom to use this to continue the great work of Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Huh? First time down here. Huh? <laughs> Alright, this week we have the testimony of Abraham. Some of you may know him as Dean. He has recently come to be baptised. Woo and this is his story. Over to you, media team. Well, the biggest goal right now is continue my university and then also speak in the United Nations and the wise education in Doha. Also, I want to become a millionaire if I can, so I can donate to the poor people, uh, I, I can donate to the Church of Christ, which means the, the place I stay right now. And also, I, will, I want to donate back to the high school I studied with me in the Roberts Second School. And why I want to connect to the poor people? Because the so many poverty situations in this world we need to solve. Basically, the autism spectrum disorder. One of the, the disorder I face actually is a pain with my a lot of problems. One one of the problems will be the hand shaking, which means I'm always making kind of a, like a joke when I'm doing the communion and people look at me <laughs> doing the hand shaking actions. But one thing I believe is Jesus Christ heal me all of this. I don't want to say as a specific because anyone can be my hero because anyone has the, their strengths and weaknesses so I will say that a lot of people who make the world into a better place like Pastor Mai he is one of my heroes moment in my life can be what I doing well when I help the different kind of people. Which means I work on a campaign speech I'm using I use the two years to make a website and I also done a lot of volunteer which means I'm a high volunteer scholar in in the whole international school. I want to follow Jesus because Jesus is the only person who understands him the most, most no matter what. This cannot be changed. And Jesus is powerful, Jesus is wonderful, Jesus is perfect, and Jesus is Son of God. How amazing is that? And then once I follow Jesus, I, I believe. He will guide me toward the future because the truth is I don't know what is my future but He will and the only thing I can do is to follow the Jesus that's all so the 
the majority of friends can be the most inclusive church in Jehovah Island. I come here first how I bring it. I don't really feel like lonely because and then I can feel like I'm I'm close to the God, Jesus and Holy Spirit is more. And then so many people help me, so many people drag me through Although I have disability, but I'm not afraid of over here because people trying to understand me with me and people trying to help and support me. So I just want to say thank you so much for the church of praise and thank you God, Jesus, Holy Spirit and guide me over here. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham, for that testimony. I think most of us are very blessed. Now, the next announcement that we have is communion will be served next weekend instead of today. So for those who are attending church online, do prepare your emblems at home next week. Now, we have another important announcement, which is Christmas service is taking place on the 25th December. Everybody say Christmas Day! Yeah, so we are having our service uh, on 25th here in church. We have two services. Everybody, show your friend two services. Two services, huh? So I have, I have a proposal. So if you cannot wake up for the 9 a.m. one, don't worry. We have the 11 a.m. one. So you kind of need to gauge. But we will have ticketing and all the uh, details will be in this QR code. Please scan and register here. All right. Now, we will also... Uh, use, please use this time to invite your friends and family to join you The reason why we are registering is just for us to gauge the number And to just spread everybody out So that everybody has a seat Everybody gets to have a great time, alright? Alright Now, on to the sermon recap Last week we had Brother Anthony sharing the word with us And one thing that stuck to me was God has a plan for us through our suffering now, Brother Anthony illustrated the story of Joseph and I thought that was super fitting because in the end, all the suffering led him to Egypt to be the second most powerful person next to Pharaoh and later save his family from famine. Alright, that was a great message and if you want to know more about the message, please log on to our YouTube to have that, to listen to that sermon once again. On to our next speaker, our, our speaker for this morning. Remember the last time I said, right? He's super good with coming up with the witty sermon titles. Continuing that today with the sermon title, you see, Patience, hey, where is the next? Ah, Patience carries a lot of weight. Please welcome our lead pastor, Pastor Mike. Thank you, Elaine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, before I go to my sermon, I'd like to uh, pray for Dean, all right? Where is Dean? Would you come and uh, we're going to pray for him? We thank God for Dean's life, really. Um, always believe God sends someone like Dean for us to teach us to love people we may sometimes feel inadequate to love. And, and Dean is such a blessing to us. We thank God for his faithfulness. And yes, let, let's, let's give the Lord the glory. We also, uh, Dean is going to US to continue and pursue his studies. All right, so we're going to pray for him. This will perhaps probably be his last service, but who knows, he may turn up again. We don't know. Dean is almost like the Holy Spirit. You can feel him, but you really don't know where he's coming from. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's stretch our hand and this beloved brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for G Dean, and, uh, who has now even changed his name to Abraham. Lord, we, we, we pray for Abraham. We pray for him. Lord, that you will bless him as he goes off and... Uh, 
you will be with him. We thank you that you are always with him and just as you have led him to Church of Praise, you will lead him to a church in America as well who will provide the support and show the unconditional love that you have shown us. Lord, we pray for Dean as he goes there. Lord, we, we speak your plan, your purpose for his life to be accomplished in Jesus' name. All that you have in store, we, we believe by faith you're going to use this young man to bless many others, to encourage many others. His life will be a great testimony of your great work and your love, O oh God. Father, we, you bless this brother as he continue to put you first, your kingdom, your righteousness. Let all things be added unto him, O oh God. Lord, even as he's there, send the right people to encourage him. Send godly people to, to, to encourage him to continue his walk with you. And grant him favour in all of his endeavours, whether it is studies or any other challenges that come. Grant him good success, O oh God. As he meditates upon your word, O oh God, not leaning to the left or to the right, but just taking your word by faith, he will be blessed. He will be blessed. Thank you. Grant him, Lord, your favour. We commit him to your loving hands and grant him journey mercies even as he travels there. And when the time is right, you bring him back to join us in this fellowship once again. Bless this dear brother, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, Abraham. I forgot. Uh, he changed his name to Abraham. He has good reason, huh? Not because he wants to take the nations and not maybe because he can't, he may. Um, but because he says he goes to America, he don't want people to call him Dean Dean, then they thought he's a dean of students, you know. Uh, I think that's a very good reason. Uh, he has foresight, you know, Dean Dean. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So, how was last night? Alright, good. We, we thank God for the Coro can Cantabile. I always very... We have had a hard time trying to pronounce the name before they came. Then we got it right this time. Alright, so uh, we really appreciate their ministry and we want to give them a small token of appreciation. I'd like to invite uh, our treasurer, Patrick Hua, to come and also like to invite the leader of the team, Sister Sharon, would you come even as we present uh, this small token of appreciation to encourage all of you where is the newspaper photographer yeah uh, new straight times all right can yeah sister sharon yeah yeah praise the lord praise the lord can we just also pray for them we'll just pray and even as sharon stands here representing the team Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the Coral Cantabile team. Lord, we thank you for their ministry. Lord, their heart, their passion. And thank you for their faith. And thank you for the many lives that they are touching through their skills and to their talents. Oh God, thank you for the commitment, the sacrifice of time. Thank you for their love and uh, for each other, even as they work together. Lord, you continue to grant them good success wherever they go. Lord, let many, many lives continue to be touched. Let many souls be added into the kingdom through their ministry as well. And Lord, grant them good health, continue to provide for every of their need as they put you first, your kingdom and your righteousness. Bless the team, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God for uh, people from the marketplace who are working hard to just preach the gospel. We are inspired not just by their giftings, but blessed by their commitment unto the Lord. I'm sure they have to make a lot of adjustment, uh, make a lot of sacrifices just to be able to come together, not just to train, but even to travel around. And we are fortunate that uh, Johor Bahru is blessed that we have this time have them and we trust that it's not going to be the last, even though it's the first. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say me, God is good. Patience carries a lot of weight. Alright, so uh, when was the last time you exhibit impatience? Uh? Think about it. When was the last time? Was it just, just now before you came? Then you want to park outside there, then the car you thought reverse light is going to come out and you're going to go in and then suddenly he switched off and you walk out of the car. 
<laughs> what is this? Uh? Or was it last night when you see the dragon flying? And we can't wait, dragon! Can you go off? <laughs> can you just land and let us have our meal? <laughs> when was the last time? When was the last time? The other day I was talking to a brother going to the airport in Sinai, brother Vincent. Is Vincent here? Vincent? Vincent, you are here. Oh, there, I must be very careful how I share it. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't share that. Right? <laughs> I said, Vincent, uh, you're such a patient man. I know, I said, you're such a good guy. Uh, you, 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 you are going through a lot in life, but I see you going on, pressing on. He said, oh, you pastor, I need a lot of patience. Yeah. Sometimes we need a lot of patience. When was the last time? When was the last time you experienced impatience? When was the last time you waited for someone to come to church and you horn still not yet come up? You are already in the car, still haven't come up. When was the last time you brought a friend to, to eat and then we order everything already and then he's still, I'm still looking, uh, I'm still looking. Don't know which one, uh, don't know which one. Hey, hungry, really? can you quickly order? But prayer carries a lot of weight. Now there was also these two girls who left a Sunday service just like this. And one of them said, wow, the pastor preached a very good sermon on patience, right? The girl said, yes, but he took extra 15 minutes to finish it. <laughs> so someone actually said, there is a very thin line between a long drawn sermon and a hostage situation. <laughs> you are all held hostage now here, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God for patience. Now I'm continuing my series, uh, Fruit. It does everyone good. On the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5 22 to 23. And I've covered love, joy, peace, and perhaps if. You have not uh, attended uh, the service you want to go through the sermon uh, you can go and watch it online uh, but let me forewarn you uh, the one on joy will teach you about patience okay that's one of the longest sermon I ever preached in church of praise wow. praise the Lord hallelujah patience it carries a lot of weight. Why is it so important? Because I think our demand for instant results is seeping into almost every corner of our lives. It has become a culture, the instant culture. Someone prayed this, God give me patience and give it to me right now. Say me right now. Give it to me right now. Don't we love it right if today just even after listening to these patients and then after that I pray for you and then you go up and you zap and you suddenly become a very patient man. I would love that too. I would really love that. I think all of us would love that. In fact, probably maybe some of you seated here are expecting that, you know. That after hearing Pastor Mike's sermon on patience today, after the prayer today, I'm going to leave this way. I'm going to be a very, very patient person. Unfortunately, No. Brothers and sisters, so does that mean you can walk out of this? No, 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 don't walk out first. Yeah. You know, now this culture, you have even how to rip your own jeans, you know. Do you like to wear ripped jeans? It's meant to be like originally rip, wear and tear. But now you go and buy it and you can't afford it, you can actually do it your own. You know, shortcut. They now even have spray on mud, you know, the ultimate accessory for city 4x4 drivers. Those people who buy four-wheel drive, but they don't go to the hills, they don't go to the jungles, they can buy this mud and then spray on their car, and then they drive. Whoa, people say, oh, this one's cool, man. He's going all over the world. He's really one, you know. Don't even have to go mountains and you look like you have gone. And then there are these books, interesting titles I come across. One year to a college degree, 
Abraham, you will love that, right? One year to a college degree. Then, shorter time, 30 days to a better life. Who doesn't want? Seven days to a brand new me. 60 minute marriage builder. Wow. One minute father. Jerry, you want or not? One minute father. Oh. I assume it means one minute to be a good father. Lah. Not that you to be a father for one minute only. Lah. <laughs> Instant time management. Wow, this one, uh, the title is good. Instant uh, time management. Then Christians also, they have this book, 60 seconds we got. Wow. 60s. I actually did a one minute devotion. I wanted to do it as an illustration, but never mind. Daily prayers, 60 seconds long only. You love it, right? Oh. Don't need to attend this prayer meeting. Saturday, no need to attend. Pastor, I'm praying 60 seconds prayer every day. And of course, this one I like, like instant sermons for busy pastors. How I like, man. Just take and open and then can preach every day. But the point is this, some situations in life can only be successfully handled by patients by going at a snail's pace. Why is patience so needed? In what areas are you talking about that especially patience is needed? You can't instantly resolve those situations no matter how you wish. One is this, patience is required to handle difficult people. Say me, difficult people. Patience is more than just being a passive emotion, actually. Patience is a practical expression of our faith, especially with regards to those around us. To those that are in the church or even from outside the church. Turn to your neighbor and say, I need patience to be patient with you. <laughs> we all need to be patient with one another. First Thessalonians 5.14, Paul says, And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idol. Say me, admonish. Admonish. Is a verb. Then encourage the faint hearted. Say me, encourage. encourage. And help the weak. Say me, help. help. And then be patient with them all. Say me, be patient. be patient. So we are to admonish, we are to encourage, we are to help, we are to be patient. Paul in this passage calls out three groups of people in the church of Jesus Christ and urge fellow Christians to deal patiently with them and deal with them in a very practical way, not just saying, I'll be patient and do nothing and each of one, each one of them to be dealt a different way. First is to admonish the idol. Now, the idol here is not just plain lazy, but the word that is used is for those soldiers who do not fall in line with all the others. All the others are lining up to the commanding officer. This particular soldier is just at the side there. You just don't bother. It is that kind of imagery. Now, Paul was referring to those who had, in practical sense, among the Christians to set themselves outside the prescribed pattern for the church. They don't want to get involved. And not only that, they were stirring up trouble. They don't want to come for service. They don't want to serve. They don't want to be in cell group. They don't want to be active any of the church programs. They don't want to do anything. They come as they like. And they make a lot of comments. This, that, that. And it is such people that Paul says to admonish to firmly advise, to get them back in line. They were out of line. They were just wandering around. And our job is to firmly advise them, come, come, come. Line up here. Line up here. Line up here. Line up together 
in the body of Christ, get aligned. The other thing, Paul says, encourage the faint-hearted. The idea here is that the, the, those who are out of track, they have to be warned, but the faint-hearted, they need to be encouraged. The faint-hearted are especially those fearful people among us who lack confidence and they have become discouraged or worried in one way or another. And these people, maybe it's us or maybe it's those that we are interacting with, these people need loving instruction from their fellow believers to calm their fears and to build their confidence. The third is to help the weak. The word for help here is anti haste anti caste, and it says it pictures the action of holding on to these people, wrapping arms around them and clinging to them, helping them. They, they, are, they are wobbling because of their struggles. And my role is to hold that person and just move to help the weak. This is the kind of help suggested for struggling, needy or immature Christians who need the arms of strong fellow believers to guide them, give them support and let them know that they are not alone. So the question is this, what if today, instead of keeping, panting up and suppressing our anger with some people we see and we just criticize them behind their back to rise up and to intentionally start by praying for a right moment to firmly but wisely advise those who are idle, who are not aligned to the body of Christ to get them back in line and to use their God-given gifts in service for the kingdom of God. As I say this, is there someone that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind? Perhaps that is the person you should do something about today and pray, Lord, what is my role in helping this brother and sister to get back in line? He has so much gifts. She has so many gifts, so many talents. How can I come and journey and try to hear them out and find out why are you out of line? What can I do to help you get back of the line? What is there that can I do to help you? What if instead of reacting with frustration, we calm the fears and build the confidence of the timid and faint-hearted among us? Instead of just scolding them, why are you so afraid one? Why are you a coward? Why are you so chicken one? Instead of reacting in anger and frustration, look, look at your cousin, look at your brothers, look at him, look at her. They are they dare to do. Why you dare not do? Instead of doing that, how can you, with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, speak words of encouragement, Speak words that build confidence in their life. That, hey brother, hey sister, you have come so far. How was it that you are able to come this far? Make them think. What is it that they are working in, is working already in their life? Rise up. Encourage them to rise up. You have been blessed with strength. What if instead of avoiding them, we extend our arms to guide, to support and to let the struggling, needy or immature fellow Christians, those that we sort of term them this way, know that they are not alone in their journey. Who is one person that you think you can help today after leaving this service next week who is one person that you will consider is struggling, that you consider is needy, that you consider is immature? I think for most people, 
Helping struggling and needy people is easy. But helping people who in some way has a character flaw, ha, ah, that is the part that we find most difficult. But God's word says, help them. Restore those who sin or fall with gentleness. The Bible says, restore. Be proactive about it. Instead of throwing stones and cursing and saying you're a bad example, you're stumbling so many people. That is the best way. Attack. Offensive. But God's word is saying no. Get down from a pedestal. Go down there. Help that person. Why? What is the root cause of your immaturity? What is it? This is patience. James says, be patient. Until the coming of the Lord, see how the farmer, he refers to the farmer, waits for the precious fruit, being patient about it until he receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient, he says, just like the farmer, and establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And he says this in a relational context. Do not grumble against one another. Paul wasn't just say, be patient to wait for the Lord's coming. But that patience is also applicable in how we relate to one another and do not grumble against one another. How many of us are guilty in our frustration? We talk something, we grumble about someone behind your back. Whoa, 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 are you this person, huh? So that you may not be judged, behold, the judge is standing at the door. It does take tremendous patience to be a farmer, right or not? Even if we are not one, we can imagine it. A farmer plows the ground, then he plants the seed, then he waters the crop, and, but every day he does that, he still has to watch and wait. He can't just say, today I want you to grow one inch, today I want you to grow four inch. It can, it cannot be done. It's not like Lego that you build with bricks. Today I just build, 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 build and I can, I can decide how high you'll go, how big you'll go. It's within my control. It's not. The farmer cannot hurry the harvest. Let's remember that. And this truth is not just for plants, is meant for people as well. We cannot hurry transformation in the lives of people that we are ministering to or working with or working under. We cannot. We hope that they will change quickly. You come to a church like this, if we have not offended you, please wait. We will wish that we come to a church and everybody is transformed. Everybody is bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But it's not like that, brothers and sisters. There are many people we come and we pray, how oh, you God change them. And we've been praying for one year, two years, three years, five years. And it's not like they're bearing fruit. They are less fruit now. We cannot hurry. That's why James says, you also be patient. Do not grumble against one another. Why well, take water also the camera follow. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. Amen. 11, 11. The Greek word for patient is makro, makrotumia. A combination of two Greek words. Makro means long or slow. To me, means where we get the word termos, termoflas and termal, it means actually anger. So next time you look at your termoflas, it's angry, yeah? It's an angry flask, okay? okay? It literally means to be slow tempered. Say me slow tempered. So patient is just being slow, not short tempered. Patience is the ability, someone says, 
to idle your mo- motto when you feel like stripping your gears, when you like, oh, oh, want to press the throttle, but you just let go and just put on neutral, pull your handbrake, and you just say, ah, idle the engine. Go only when ready to go. Oh, I just see, I see. Okay, la, you, are, you are like that. La. Okay, okay, I see, I see. I stay, I stay calm, chill. La, huh? Now, again, as we talk about patience, uh, let us not confuse Patience as the inability to feel anger. You will feel anger. And sometimes we may have a right to be angry. And we have the right to get angry. We see some of the things happening and say, Are you, why are like that? Why this person? Why choose that person? Why don't choose this person? Oh, then we get very angry. Oh, you see the WhatsApp the last few days. Why this person? Why not that person? can understand the anger. But actually, patience means we are too slow to express this anger and be quick to resolve it. The problem is we, we, we go to express it, we do the opposite. We are quick to show displeasure but slow to find closure. We are so fast. We get angry. And when someone tells us to calm down, we justify why we are angry. And if someone even dare to suggest during that angry moment of yours to say, you have to let go, you have to forgive. Who? Your anger suddenly from A, you transfer to that person. Who are you to tell me not to be angry? Who? Lagi angry. Why? Because closure is not in our mind. We are more concerned, we are more focused on why this thing is making me angry and my right to be angry. And somehow, somehow, erroneously, my right to express my anger this way. And that's the big problem. If we are going to be patient people, we must embrace in our psyche that closure must be a part of our emotional life. Closure must be a part in our resolving of conflicts. Closure. Say me, closure. Closure. I don't know how many of you today are still angry with certain things in your life that you have not brought closure to. I want to tell you, God is telling you, bring closure to that matter. It's time to bring closure. Yes, you may be right to feel angry. You you have been wrong. You have been despised. You have been rejected. You have been hurt. You, You may feel every right. We are not talking about your right to be angry in that situation. We are talking about bringing closure. Now what? Okay, I'm angry. You are angry. Now what? The next question is, now what? Going to continue to be angry? Or you want to resolve it? Bring closure so that life can go on. Sometimes the people actually that you love most will try your patience the most. That's why God sent me to Jerry. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm God's gift to train my staff patience. Yeah. <laughs> Every time they do at least, Pastor, on the way, really, on the way, really. Okay, okay. <laughs> Marriage is full of surprises, someone says. But it's mostly just asking each other, do you have to do that right now? (laughs) Do you have to do that right now? That is why Paul says, love is... Love is patient. Love is patient. So patience is required to handle difficult people. The other thing why it's so important is because it's required to manage demanding problems. Say me, demanding problems. We all have demanding problems. 
And some of us just don't want to go through this kind of situation. You know, there is a guy, uh, he offers his services to wait for rich people, you know. $5,000 uh, for a five-day wait for whatever item the person wants. You pay him, he wait in line for you. Maybe the next iPhone come out. Uh. You don't want to line up, you pay this person, he'll line up and get the phone for you. But you pay him. So we don't want, we just want to wait at home, then the thing delivered. Grab delivery, something like that. There are two important needs for patients. One is for in our response to unfavorable people, the other is our response to unfavorable situations. And God will see that we will have a ready supply for both. The Greek word hypomone is translated either patience or endurance. It describes the ability of a plant. Uh, this one, I don't know, plastic or what. Like. This one, I think plastic. So no matter how hot, also won't die. Right? Okay, may melt to it. Right? Okay. It's the ability of a plant to live under very adverse and difficult conditions. And sometimes you call it staying power. Staying power. So in this sense, biblical patience, when we talk about patience, is always connected with some kind of tribulation and some kind of testing. It's not just normal patient with a little thing, waiting for your food to come to the table. It's more than that actually. But the point I want to make here is this. When we talk about patience, when the Bible talks about patience, when we talk about Christian being patient, what is it that makes it different with us from the world? The world can have many patient people, but the Christians, when they are patient, they have a different motivation. We not only bear, we bear the hard times with hope. Say me hope. That is why Paul says, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance, say me endurance, the same word for patience and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Patience reflects, actually, our confidence in God to do His work. Why were you so angry when so and so is now in a position of authority? Why are you so upset do you think that God has stopped working because a particular person is in power or group is in power? Do you think God has stopped working? Do you think God has stopped working because some unfair, unjust decisions have been made? Some untrue remarks that have been made by people whom we have no control over, but yet you have to submit to. Do you think God has stopped working? When we talk about patience today, I want to speak to some of you. Be patient with what God is doing in Malaysia. Let it be online. Brothers and sisters, the Malaysians especially, let me speak to you. Be patient with God, with what He's doing in Malaysia. We are called to be patient and not just being patient, but patient with hope. Knowing God is going to do something beautiful in Malaysia in His time. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord the glory. Let's clap in faith. We believe in a God. We are not in control, but God is in control. We are weak, but He is strong. That's our God. When God asks us to be patient, He does not tell us to simply grind and just bear it and not certain of how you work out. He is always at work in the process. Have you heard of the idiom, the patience of Job? 
It means to have a great deal of patience and faith during times of trouble and adversity. And I know there are some of us here now. Now is the time of your adversity. Now is your time of your trouble. And God is saying, be patient with hope. Job was indeed known as the most patient man in the Bible and he easily could have been the most depressed actually and the most suppressed actually. He lost everything. He lost his farm. He lost his cattle. He lost his family, his children, grandchildren. He lost his health. He even lost the confidence of his wife and his close friends. Can you imagine if you are him, if I am him, I will be depressed now. I will need Prozac more than anything else. I, I don't know what will happen. This just suddenly come to me. And I, I don't think anyone will blame me if a person such as him go to depression. If a person like him reacts in anger towards God, who would dare to blame him? Who will just stand and will just say, we don't know what to do. But the good thing is that God was working in the heart of Job. As he went through this, when he went through after these things, when he came out of it, this is what he says. He says, you ask, who is this that questions my wisdom? You, he, he was referring to God. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? And then Job replied, he says, it is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about, things far too wonderful for me. And he says, I had only heard about you, about God before, but now I have seen you, he has seen God. With his own eyes, I take back everything I said, Job told God. And I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. What in essence was he saying? Job was saying, in my paraphrase of what he says, God was able to teach me some things in the valleys of my problems that I would never have learned in the mountaintop of prosperity. I'm sure some of you who have gone through hard times, you will know what I am saying. There are some lessons in life that have to go through the schools of hardship and that God has to allow us to go through and we learn these precious lessons on depending on Him, on totally not depending on anyone or anything else because you know that you can only depend on God for that healing, for that restoration, for that wholeness that you are seeking for. What could be the lesson here? Be patient in facing problems because in the hands of God, they are not meant to defeat you. They are not meant to depress you. They are not meant to discourage you. I don't know. What is it that you are going through right now? What is this hard thing? Picture in your mind and read this statement over it. Let this statement speak over your problems. What is it that you are going? I want you to know what you are going through as far as God is concerned. It is not meant to defeat you. It is not meant to depress you. It is not meant to discourage you. Whether it is you illness, sickness, something that is taken away from you, something that is beyond your control, something that you have been trying to overcome but you cannot and you just feel very discouraged, something that you have tried your best to deal and find a solution but a solution is not forthcoming, something that you have been thinking about, what can I do but it is not happening, you are lost for any solutions to that problem. God, Perhaps he's saying to you today, my child, this, what you are going through today, is not meant to defeat you, it's not meant to depress you, it's not meant to discourage you, but it's meant to develop you. 
to draw out the best in you that He has destined you to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. Working on the words of God that you have been listening all these years. God is saying, I'm developing you. He's developing character among us, brothers and sisters. He's molding us to be more Christ-like. He's strengthening us. The Lord is strengthening you. Say me, rise up. Let's rise up, brothers and sisters. Let's rise up for our circumstances. James 1, 3, 4, For when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow and don't try to squirm out of your problems. Who among us is trying to squirm out of your problems? I'm one of them. You've got problem. I really want to find a way out quickly, right? We are human. But God said, don't, don't, don't be, don't be like the wife of Abraham, Saint Hagar, try to solve your problem your way. Huh? For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything. Strong in character. Say me strong in character. And full and complete. And this is, will be our story, brothers and sisters. This is the story God meant for you and me. That we will be a people ready for anything. Say me ready for anything. Say me, I am ready for anything. In the law. We will be that people if we are not ready in the process. Brothers and sisters, none of you is going to be left out in this process. You will be ready for any challenges that God is putting in your life. Let me speak it to you. You will be strong in character no matter how much people have criticized you up to today. I want to speak God's word into your life. You will be strong in character. You will be full. You will be complete. What if today you regard the problems that you face as not tools by Satan to tear you down but tests from God to build you up? Why are we overly concerned and every time we are in hardship we think it is spiritual warfare? Maybe it is. I'm not denying that. But even with spiritual warfare, even the attacks from the enemy can be redeemed by God for his purpose. Unless you tell me Satan's plans is stronger than God's purpose for your life. If not, whether it's spiritual attack, not spiritual attack, it will be redeemed by God. I don't know. You may be going to spiritual attacks, you may not be. But even if it is, let me just say to you, God will redeem, will redeem the attack and use it as a test to build you up. In a way, Job was facing a kind of spiritual attack. But God redeemed that situation and built him up, strengthened him to be who he is. We may think that if we will only read the right books, go to the right conferences, find the right church, we might quickly become a mature Christians. That's what we think, right? That's our narrative. But not so, brothers and sisters. We have to go through times of difficulties with the hard knocks of life. Moses spent 40 years, say me 40 years, 40 years in the wilderness before he was used by God. We are considered extremely blessed. Next year, we're going to uh, celebrate our 35th year anniversary. Come for the dinner. Huh? Turn to your neighbor and say, come for the dinner. Huh? Uh, we're going to celebrate God's faithfulness. 35 years, the church already, two families built up to this side. Wow, consider God is very gracious. Huh? Imagine He put me through like Moses, 40 years here, and no fruits. Huh? I'll be out of job. Huh? The church board say, Pastor, I think we want to employ another pastor. Yeah. Joseph was 13 years in an Egyptian prison. 
Jesus lived 30 years in obscurity before three years that changed the world. The seasons of waiting. What is God talking to you right now through what you are going through? Brothers and sisters, embrace it. Trust Him. Always remember, Christ's likeness is not cheap. Say me, Christ's likeness is not cheap. Christ's likeness is not cheap. The transformation, the transformed persona that you see in some of our members, you say, wow, this person, such grace, didn't become gracious overnight. It was through a process. Such commitment. It didn't become commitment just like that. It's through a process, hard process, hard lessons that we learn, that we know this is not the way to go. We hit a wall and then we turn back and then we know this is the way to go. Sometimes he put walls, 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 walls. Time to go the direction God wants us to go. It's not cheap. So patience to handle difficult people, manage demanding problems. Lastly, patience is required actually to fulfill divine purposes. Say me divine purposes. You know, someone put this. He says you get the chicken by hatching the egg, not by smashing it. How many of you are smashing the eggs in your life because you want the chicken? Where's the chicken? Die lah, you like that, pump. It's scrambled egg ready. You get scrambled egg, you don't get the chicken. Our God is a God who knows how to wait in order to fulfill His divine purposes. Do you know that? Our God is a waiting God. Our God is a patient God. And He waits for a purpose. He didn't just say, Oh, it's my character to be patient and I'll be patient. No, there was a purpose behind it. Ask yourself, why is the world still here with all this evil, this rebellion, this godlessness that is in it? Why? Why has not God just zapped us like in the Old Testament? Just like in Noah, just, just kill everybody in the world. And then maybe that few remnant just keep it. Only the members of Church of Praise will survive this. <laughs> now let me tell you, definitely it is not because God is powerless. It is because it's not because God is passive, He doesn't want to do anything. It is simply because God is patient. He wants to wait a little longer so that His redemptive purposes can be realized and more people, say me, more people, more people, more than what we have here, more than all that is in the churches worshipping today on this Sunday, more people out there beyond the walls of the church will come to know Him, will come have to have an encounter with Him, will realize how much He loves them, will realize how much is their need for them. That is why he's pulling back. That is why he's pushing the pause button on this machine of judgment that will come, that will definitely come. But this is a pause right now. We are living in this pause right now. And it takes patience from him to keep that button on pause mode. If he just press play, he's gone. But he paused and he's waiting and he's observing. He's like that, that, that father of the prodigal son who, who looks from far away every day waiting. When will my son come to his senses and come back? The scripture says he was there waiting. He wasn't busy and he wasn't like cut off. So there's a patience in the father. Waiting. There's a yearning. The waiting was motivated by a purpose, by a goal, by a vision that the sun will come back. Likewise, 
we want to achieve God's purposes, we must be patient. 2 Peter 3 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promises as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. My point here today is this an instant success, and especially in serving God's purposes, is a myth. It's a myth. Don't think today that you put your hands on, on something that you want to do for the Lord and you expect immediately all the people you are reaching out to, suddenly they get saved. Don't expect the friend that you invite last night for the dinner and then today he's going to get saved. It is one week he's going to take, take, get saved. He may not. It's not they go to attend one Christmas dinner and they're going to get saved. We, we hope. Maybe there are some God will do, but they will be the minority. I just wish that ministry is like instant noodle. Maggie me. You know that this story, uh, this church, uh, they call it the Church of the Holy Family in Barcelona, Spain. So Spain is not just famous for football. Okay? Spain is famous for having one of the largest unfinished Catholic school and it's a UNESCO heritage site. And this was started by an architect named Antoni Gaudi or Godai. And he actually started planning for this in the 1880s. And when he died in 1926, he only completed 15 to 25 percent, almost just one quarter max. Some 40 years, 40 years of his life he gave, but he only completed 25 percent of the building that he envisaged. And after he died, architects come and they'll just continue and the work. They continue to build on that 25 percent. But it's still going on right now, up to today. And they hope to complete the main structure on 2026, four years from now, 100 years anniversary of this guy uh, after he died. They hope to at least complete the main structure. Only main structure huh? is not even complete yet, 2026. They say that all the elements, decorative elements, were only complete by 2030 to 2032. So just to build this building, this vision, so majestic, it takes more than a person's lifetime, hundred over years. Someone put it this way, the mules of God grind slowly. William Carey preached for seven years before his first convert in India. Now, I hope this will encourage. These are great men of God. These are prayerful men of God. These are people who are learned in the scripture. These are very intelligent people and very committed. So I hope you will encourage some of you you are reaching out to some people, especially those of you who are reaching out in evangelists. Don't give up. Say me, don't give up. Brothers and sisters, don't give up praying for your loved one, for your friend, for their salvation. Don't give up reaching out to them. It's not happening now, it will happen another day. We always say the best is yet to come. Greater things are in store. So don't give up. There are some of you here. You just need to know, hear this. I want to speak this over your life. Don't give up praying for your loved ones. Don't give up just after one Christmas dinner, not yet get saved. Next year, whatever dinner we are, you don't want. No, 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 no effect one. Don't. I shared my testimony before. My, my, my niece came, I don't know how many years, how many Christmas dinner, year in, year out, but after five or six years, she got saved. Hey, she married a Christian. The father, very anti Christian, also had to walk, <laughs> go to church. We say, My father, first time I have to come to church already. Really. Good lah. Now the father is my next target lah. If you watch online, I think my sister sometimes watch. I'm very good. <laughs> Next year, don't want to come there. I know you watch already. 
Adoniram Judson sweated out Burma's heat for 18 years without a fellow, six years without a convert. Hey, brothers, is that what I'm saying here? These are godly men, you know, they can't get people saved. You think we are all these? Huh? You can't believe that small fry, small fish. Huh? You know, in, in the so called uh, Christian world, wow, we want to preach straight, get saved. Preach, get saved. How many can be Billy Graham? Many of us are not meant to be there. God is molding us, teaching us patience. Patience is required to handle difficult people, demanding problems, divine purposes. I read this article, everything I needed to know about life, I learned from a jigsaw puzzle. How many of you have done some huge big saw puzzle? Can I see your hands? Wow. My paisa yeah, can take out. You, you must, well, I'm not seeing you because I, you must be very patient people already. Yeah. It says, first is establish the border first. Boundaries give a sense of security and order. Know your limitations if you ask me. What you can do and what you cannot do. You must know. When things are not going well, take a break. Everything will look different when you return. Third, working together with friends and family makes any task quicker and more fun. And that's where I believe in terms of doing the purposes of God, the church comes in. The cell groups come in. Fourth, the creator of the puzzle, and in our sense it's God, already gave us the picture as a guidebook, the vision of what can be. And don't force a fit. If something is meant to be, it will come together naturally. Is any one of us here today in your context, you are trying to force things and you know it. Perhaps God today is telling you, stop forcing. Time to release and let God take over. Don't force it. It's not meant. What if it is not meant for God, for this thing to be done this way? You plan. Man plans, but God directs. What if this is applicable to you today? What if today you are hitting this wall and actually God is not asking you to break the wall, God is asking you to detour? What if? Six, anything worth doing takes time and effort. A great puzzle cannot be rushed. Patient space. Every puzzle goes together bit by bit piece by piece. Patient pace. Patience is the key to maturity. That's what we said earlier. Patience is also the key to victory. James says that when we endure, we will receive the crown of life, the crown of victory, which God has promised to those who love Him. And that comes through endurance. Patience is the key to tranquility. James says we count them blessed who endure. We count them happy, those who endure. They somehow are a happier person at the end. I want to ask, are we treating life like we treat museums? This question for some of us. You know, museums are supposed to be calm, peaceful place where great works of art or artifacts, they are displayed for us to just walk and then just see. But most people visit museums with a theme park mentality to keep moving and see as many things as possible. I remember some years ago, I went to Israel and we went to the museum there. And so many things to see. I was so engrossed with it. And then, until everybody had already gone off in the bus, and the bus was horning, pong, 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 the guy had kind of go, hey, I said, can, can go back really. We're all leaving. I said, why so leave? Uh, so many things I haven't seen. I only see only one quarter only. So the point is not about going to a museum. The point is about going through life. Do you rush through life? Just like you rush through museum? What if we are to slow down? What if we savored living? In God's world, instead of trying to check everything off the bucket list, 
Oh, today to do list, to do list, quickly check it off. And we miss it. We miss the joy of the journey for the destination. How much more would we see God in the beauty around us if we had just paused for a moment? And sometimes this question I ask myself, okay, Joy, my fellow hiker, huh? we will hike, we're very fast, we focus. Sometimes we forget. Then we have some team members who will take photo, take photo, then remind us that they can enjoy. Lah. Why I just want to finish quickly? Oh, you, what time ready? Faster, finish the track. Then we have some team member who take photo, take photo, everything take. Oh, you, this one also take. Ah. What's so nice? <laughs> Come on, <lah>, let's go. Ah. <laughs> Impatience, okay. But maybe there's a lesson to be learned there. We miss out. We have been so engrossed with our destination. We miss out some of these little things. Patience and perseverance have a magical effect before which difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish. John Quincy Adams. So, in application as we close, to all you, I think don't say all you, la, I'm also impatient. La. To all of us impatient people here in this room and watching online, some suggestions on how to develop Practical suggestion, develop patience. Be kind to yourself about your shortcomings. I think before you talk about being patient to others, please, for some of you, be patient with yourself. Say me, be patient with yourself. You are work in progress and you are work in process. Sometimes I see some parents, they really struggle. I don't pressure my kids, eh? they pressure themselves. Eh? I think it may not just be the kids, we ourselves also. We are impatient. We want to finish it quickly. Adjust and, we, and when we can't, we get angry and we are, in, we are impatient with our impatience. You know what I mean? <laughs> we are impatient with our impatience. Why am I still so impatient? 20 years Christian, we still like that. 20 years Christian, drive cars still, wow, all kinds of words can come out. Adjust your expectation. Accept that people and situations will never be perfect. This is so important, but yet so easily forgotten that people are not perfect. None of the people who work with us and for us are perfect. None. And we've got to embrace them. Accept that they are not perfect and that life twists and turns and take it with grace and with humour. List the things you feel grateful for every day. Studies have actually shown that when you show gratitude, when you are thankful, you are more likely to be a patient and a self-controlled person because you are happier. You are really thankful. So nothing much to grumble. Thank God for this. Be prepared to distract yourself with other activities while you wait. Essentially, we tolerate occupied time far better than unoccupied time. So I know some of our heroes work in Singapore. They are very good in games. Right? Because while waiting, they play games. So they are very high up in the level. Right? It's, I see them who are very famous huh, in the game world. Yeah. It's okay. Because I'd rather you play game than you go and horn people and scold people. Why so slow? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. That is biblical. Not, huh? Remember your testimony. Our patience will achieve more than our force. All right? Believe that God is still at work. This is the most important. Believe that God is still at work in your life. Paul says, so we are not giving up. He says, we are not giving up. He says, how could we? This is a paraphrased version from Eugene Peterson. He says, even though on the outside it often looks like things are just falling apart on us, you will get older, more impatient, ready lah. On the inside, but on the inside, say me on the inside, on your inside, where God is making new life, God is making new life in your heart, not a day goes by, not a day is wasted, not a day in your life is wasted by God, goes by without 
His unfolding grace. Remember one time I shared an illustration that we have this book that you pay, then, then, then suddenly there's another page that you can pull out and then there's a very beautiful picture, enlarged picture. God is unfolding good things in your life and my life. We have to believe that. God is at work. Hallelujah. Amen. We now come to the end of the service and just want to invite uh, Sister Melissa okay, to lead us in a song and then I will pray. Shall we stand? Today, because this was a last minute request, so Melissa is going to do it with a minus one track. This is perhaps one of so called uh, favorite uh, songs of mine. Yet not I, but through Christ in me, right? So, I feel as we close, I think it's always very important that we come back to the Lord. We are talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Today, this is not meant to just challenge you to, do, to be a more patient person by your own strength. If anything, as we come to a close, I like to encourage you and encourage myself to just come back to the Lord. The patience that God expects from our life will be a fruit of the work of the Holy Spirit in my, in my life and in your life. And if that is true, then the answer lies in getting closer to God the Holy Spirit in getting closer to Jesus himself. And so, I hope as we sing this song, we sing together with Melissa as we declare this, yet not I, but through Christ in me. I think this is so important because when we sing it this way, when we say it this way, then I'm saying that I am depending on God to be who I am and to be who I can be in Him. I am just depending on Him. It is yet not I. Yes, I, am, I have a vision to be a more patient person. And I believe that I will be. But yet not I. It must come through Christ in me. And as we close, may I encourage you as we sing this song to just draw closer to Jesus. Just draw closer in and sing this unto the Lord and as you believe it, you, you just draw closer and you, you just hunger for Him. And I'm just going to trust that God is going to do something, something special as we close. My heart's desire is not that you just be tickled in your mind by what I say. Oh, he says, very reasonable. Oh, I'm inspired. Don't be inspired by my words. Be connected to the Holy Spirit. Draw close. Let him do a deeper work. He's going to do a deeper work. He wants to do a deeper work. More than just what's right in your mind, what you've just heard. He wants to do a deeper work in your heart. And I'm also thirsting and hungering for that. I don't just want to preach a sermon today. I want to share something that even I myself hear it. I want more from this and I want God to do some wonderful work in my life. Now that I know how important that it is, I want more. I want God to change me, to transform me, give me the grace to make the decisions I need to make. To, to see things the way I need to see, but I need His grace, yet not I, but through Christ in me. And, and the assurance is that Christ is with you. Christ is in you. And because He is in you, He's going to do that work in your life. 
And so you sing with confidence, you sing with faith that God is going to do a great work in your life. Slowly but surely, God is going to do change and transform you. The Lord bless the preaching of His Word. Yes, Melissa. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sing together with me. Let's worship our Lord. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but true Christ in me. Hallelujah. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hope, my shepherd will defend me. Christ in me. Amen to that. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. He was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hope my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing. I am free and not I. True Christ in me. Hallelujah. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus. For He has said that He will bring me home. And day by day, I know He will renew me. Till I stand with joy before the truth To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus All the glory evermore to Him When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat True Christ in me to this, to this I hope, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but true Christ. Complete, still my lips shall repeat, 
yet not I, but you Christ in me. Yet not I, but you Christ in me. Yet not I, but you Christ in me. Christ in me. Hallelujah. There's always, there's always hope in the Lord. Hallelujah. There's always hope in Jesus. Father, just thank you. Thank you for your presence here with us today. Thank you for ministering to us. Thank you for assuring us that you, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, that you who began that good work in us, will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the assurance that even though outwardly we may be perishing, but yet inwardly we are being renewed by the Holy Spirit day by day, O oh God. We thank you for your great work that you are doing in our lives. Lord, keep our eyes on you. Help us not to be discouraged but just to keep our eyes on you and knowing that even though there are times we may feel like giving up, but you have not given us up. That you who have started that work in us will bring it to completion. You will keep us, you will hold us, O oh God. You will cover us, O oh God. Thank you, Abba Father, that even, even at times we may even not have the strength to pray for ourselves. That even at the times that even we, do, we doubt that people are praying for us. But you, our great intercessor, you are praying for the betterment of us, O oh God. Thank you for the assurance. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. May your spirit continue to do its work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I think I want to close with one more prayer. We want to pray for those who came for the dinner last night. Right, we, we do not know how it's been ministered. We do get some one at least one report about someone wanting to come, one youth wanting to come our youth service, and, and we're going to pray because I think we are not just going to pray because we want the salvation. I think it is also imperative for all of us here to always be conscious about evangelism, to always be conscious like just just what now not just now. Uh, the uh, choral cantabilite sang that we, we are to preach the word and we are, to, we are to bring this good news and this is our responsibility and I think we need to keep reminding ourselves of that and we need to be constantly and intentionally be doing that and, and we want to be committed to that and so we will continue to pray for these people Hallelujah. Father, just want to pray for our brothers and sisters who came last night. Those who do not know you, we pray for the salvation of their souls in Jesus' name. We want to believe in you that nothing happens by accident, that there is no coincidence for them to be there last night, to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ, to experience the joy of the people of God as they come. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Whatever that we speak and whatever words that Christians may have spoken to them that can draw them closer to you, that can open their hearts, Lord, you, you speak to them right now. We pray for their salvation in Jesus' name. We come against the work of the enemy, the, the God of this age who has blinded them. Lord, we pray that the scales of their eyes be removed in Jesus' name. We come against every hindrances, everything that blocks them, that comes in between them and you right now in Jesus' name. Whether it's spiritual, whether it's mental, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, whatever hindrances, we ask you to remove it in Jesus' name. Make way the path for them to come to you, O God. O Kura Basakari Aladaba, Lord, we surrender our loved ones our friends, the salvation of their souls to you. If there's any gift that we can give them, the most important gift is the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. So Lord, we commend them to your loving hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's continue to pray. 
So go in the blessings of God. Let me just bless you with the benediction. And now to Him, to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask and imagine. According to His power that is at work within us, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Go in the power, in the anointing, in the favour and the grace of God. Amen. And do stay back for some fellowship. And please uh, take some time to thank the Coro Cantabile for their wonderful ministry. God bless you. So good to see all of you. Amen.